you would like 12 volt power, yes? Yeah. This <clears throat> big mamma jamma is what charges your battery. Yeah, we pulled off the uh, fuse panel there, and we've pulled out the fuses, and behind there is... The inverter. And so, this is all your wiring that goes to the camper. So what we're going to do... See, when Jayco... Actually, when any ma manufacturer, when they build these things, they do it in the cheapest way possible. The, the correct way to do this is to solder these and then insulate them. Instead, they just twist the wires around and then crimp them down with a... Oh, why do they do that? Because it's faster and cheaper. Um, but... The next step is you'll have to decide where you want your the, the primary bulk of your wiring, like where you'd like your connection panel, and then we're going to run a fused wire from there on the camper over to wherever it is you want it, and then have it available for you. Um, and then we'll tie it into here, and then we'll tie it into that uh, rig runner, and then you'll be able to plug all of your electronic equipment in, and to be able to run it directly off the battery. Uh, and then when you plug into shore power or when you're driving down the road, the inverter will recharge your camera battery. I'm not saying I'm about to panic, but we're about to drill the first hole in the JV Rover. Whoa! All right, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> You ready, Noah? I think you're over ready, to tell you the truth. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. <laughs> Say goodbye to your pretty little camper trailer. Right. The rover is no longer innocent. So Noah's just going to feel with his hand. That's a real tried and true method when you're drilling a hole in something, is you put your hand on the other side, and then once you feel the drill go through with your hand, then you know you're good, right, Noah? Well, what I'm a little afraid of is I don't, wanna, I don't want the hole to come out where the oven is. Or the propane line. Or the, that'd be good, too. How we looking? How'd that hurt? Did that hurt too much? Uh, no. I, Does that feel okay? I kind of liked it. Okay. Nice. Right, we can do it again. So now we're going to run uh, a wiring through there and hook it up to the inverter. What's the next step? No, no, his tool bag over there. Man, I was like telling you earlier how much I wish I had that thing a couple different times when I'd been in Seattle. Yeah. Don't, has it crossed your mind? I should just get another one and leave it in Seattle. Has that crossed your mind? <laughs> Side trip. Let's go through. What's well, actually the most expensive thing that I usually carry in here is in here. I have a network tracer that's in that I can plug it in. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that would be a little hard it's to like have. $1,600. Yeah. Wow, those are so nice, though. Yeah. The more, here's a tip, pro tip. The more toys you have, the faster you get your work done. <laughs> now, uh, Chris. Yes, sir. You don't happen to have AC in here, do you? AC what? Power. Not at the moment. Probably not. But, you know what? Hmm. They have those block heater plugs at the parking lot over there, and I do have a uh, 120 to uh, whatever it is, adapter, 230. Do you have an extension cord long enough to reach over there? Yeah, possibly. Right. I've got like a 100 foot extension cord. Yeah, let's look into it. Ooh, a challenge. You see, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes even the best laid plans can go awry <laughs> when you can't find your solder. What happened, Noah? Well, here's the thing, Chris. I had solder. I know I had solder. I always have solder. You go always. I have the soldering gun. <laughs> but I, uh, <clears throat> the stuff that I need to adhere the wires together. Yeah. So maybe we're making the hardware store trip. No, no, no. We're, we're gonna we're gonna find it. It's in here somewhere. Just sometimes you gotta dig. You gotta go in the right hole. You kind of dug through that whole thing there, I man. No, I feel like it. It's kind of all over the floor. I, oh, yeah. Style, I think. Yeah. The final moments, the soldering is happening. So, when you go to solder a wire, <clears throat> what you want to do, it, a common mistake is, the soldering iron gets hot, so people take the solder and touch it right to the iron, right? That's actually not what you want to do, because then you get what we know as a cold solder. What I want to do is I actually want to heat that joint up as much as possible, and then once the joint is heated, then I can use the solder touching the top of the joint until the wire actually absorbs the solder. And that's how you're going to get a really good a really good solder connection, but if I were to go at the bottom here, the solder will melt. That's not what we want to do. We want to come up here at the top, so I'm just going to wait until that wire warms up a little bit. The other trick here is, <clears throat> the smaller the solder you can use, the better, really. They have that, that welding stuff that you can get at like Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards. I'd stay away from it, especially if you're doing smaller jobs. It's great for welding pipe. It's not so great when you're doing tiny little wires. I would actually, I'd actually prefer smaller solder than what I even have here. It's just that, uh... That's what you had available. Well, that's what we had available, and turns out we're kind of in a... Rush, because we're supposed to be in a meetup in five minutes. There's that. 
There we go. Now, see how that wire got warm? Yeah, so I do. It just it's sucking, really working it. It's just sucking the solder right up. That's so perfect. That's going to make a really nice, solid connection. Yeah, it's basically going to be one piece now. Yep, that's exactly right. That's what a proper solder joint should look like. And then you cap it? And then, yeah, and then we'll insulate once it's, it. Once it's cooled once down. Once it's cooled down, yeah. What's done is we uh, use these little connectors called Anderson Power Poles. Now, these are my favorite uh, low voltage connectors. They actually supply an amazing amount of current. We can power up to 30 amps with these little bad boys, and they're genderless. So, for example, if I had a battery and a, and a power source, like a power supply, I can plug the power supply into the battery, and it works just fine. And then I can disconnect them and take the battery and plug it into something that needs power, like a cell phone or a laptop or a mobile studio or I can plug the mobile studio right into the um, power supply itself. What we've put in here below is, the sink is what's known as a rig runner made by the PowerWorks company and essentially it takes a power in and then fuses it so we have it fused at 40 amps and uh, we're not going to talk about <coughs> what these fuses are but each individual connection is fused so if I have my meter here and I were to plug into each one of these connections, we see that we get 12 volts on all of these right down the line. And so what this is going to allow Chris to do is he can plug his cell phone in and his laptop in and the mobile studio in and they'll all run off of the same one hole and one power line source that we ran to his battery. And this is this is 12 gauge um, wire, so it's going to be good for, I would say, 20 to 30 amps at 12 volts, no problem. And then you have individual breakers right there that if they pop, I can replace them. Yep, we've we've run individual fuses, <clears throat> and um, and then we've also put, we have a master fuse for the, the connection, and then we have another fuse over here to the fuse panel that runs out to the, the rig runner. So if, if we're gonna totally prevent a fire anywhere, we have a short, worst case scenario is we're gonna have a blown fuse, but we're not gonna have a fire in the camper. Yeah, and that's gonna be awesome to power the studio gear.